evening, everybody. Um, apologies in advance for any uh, poor quality uh, video, if there is any, because I'm attempting to go live on Twitch uh, from my home internet, which is uh, pretty terrible. So um, hopefully when we switch to the uh, desktop, which has very little actually going on in terms of video, that should work out fine. So let's switch over to that now. Just check how it's going. Yep. Um, if you were to look at this on a uh, on YouTube, uh, that will be the local recording that's uploaded later, which will be higher resolution anyway. So hopefully this won't affect any of you guys too much. Move that down. So today I have my trusty jazz bass with me. Uh, this has John East Active Electronics in it and sounds absolutely fantastic in my opinion. Uh, the strings are a little older than I would like, admittedly, but um, I'm living miles away from anywhere. I don't have any spares right now, so these will have to do. I've put a little extra treble in the preamp to kind of make up for that fact. So if I have a completely clean signal, it sounds like this. Now, let's go straight into a tone that I really like. Now, that may be a little too gritty for you, but depending on what you like, this is an Ampeg SVT on bright mode. If I go into normal mode, the preset seems to have quite a lot less of a mid boost and without a pick with my fingers it sounds like this so it's got a very round bottom end and just a little bit of definition on the top but not enough to make it poke through a mix and if you're doing kind of a, a classic indie track garage rock or even kind of Anything where you want the bass to sit in the mix but not really jump out, this, if I grab a pick again, should be a, a perfect kind of mix rounder. So you get that. Now, there's adjustable mid frequencies on this thing. There's three choices. If I push the mids at 3K a bit, get a bit more detail. The cab, being the S 8x10 SVT, has a U47 on it, of course it does, right up against the grill. No early reflections. And what that does is, there's no tweeter in this cab, and a U47 gives a big fat round sound in between them. You get that. You can hear some distortion in there, but it's kind of a low level distortion. Uh, that's on the normal uh, SVT. So. If we go over to the bright one again, we should get... And you can really push the gain on the amp. And you get a real authoritative rock and roll growl. Let's just see how we're doing, if I can. Is there anybody watching? Nope, just me. Maybe someone will watch, and I'll just watch this back to see uh, on the VOD what the quality is like. This is more of a test for me, although I am, like I say, doing the uh, doing this as a, a broadcast as part two of the Helix, and then I'm going to do part three. Actually, no, I'm going to do that in with this video as well. I'm going to take a break in the middle and uh, load up a project that's just a little 10-second stinger that I did and try the thermionic amps up against these and then particularly for bass there's only one amp in the thermionic set so let's have a look at these so we've got tuck and go oh that's the um i know what that is that's the uh ampeg portaflex So that's, yeah, when it says drive, it's got a very kind of low mid push. 
Which means that when you do all your like Motown type stuff, you get that. That kind of thing. That does sound a little rounder and fatter than I would have uh, for that kind of track, but I could always put an EQ after that. Or I could bump the treble up, take the bass down a little, change the mic out from a 67 to something more like a 112. So that's, yeah, that's more like what you might have got there. Now let's have a look at the options we've got. The Woody Blue. That is one of the newer ones. That is going to be a big fat sound because this is an acoustic amps three, uh, 360, I think. 360. <laughs> Surprisingly bright for an 18 inch cab. I like it. Now let's see what else we've got. Now Cali bass. That's uh that's got to be a, a Mesa, I'm guessing. Ooh, that's fuzzy. With a fifth. Mm. Now for the one that I'm really looking forward to, and that's the Cali 400, and that is the Mesa uh, Base 400 Plus. Nice, and it's going into a 6x10. Now, I'm guessing channel 2 is the one with the more grit. Now, if I take the drive back, push the high, mid, and the treble quite a lot. Maybe get a little more drive back. Nice. Now, what else have we got? Galleon Kruger, G Kruger. Let's just take this down to a drop D style for a minute. So, this is a 4x10 that's got a 4 2 1 in front of it. It's got no processing other than just the amp. Let's just crank the treble a bit and the high mid on this. Uh, what's cons? Hmm. So that's still there. I expected that to have a bit more oomph about it. Maybe let's have a look, see in, in the distortions what we have uh, to maybe go in front of this and maybe blend it in a little bit, if that's possible. Can we get a distortion? There we go. Turn on a distortion. <laughs> Hmm, see if we can get a, maybe the hedgehog would be more appropriate for this. And then we can blend that in. So they're both centered. So this is, this is B. 
Yeah. So I can blend some of the distortion in in parallel before the amp. So I get a dry wet control. <laughs> Now that's a bit spiky, so let's take the tone back, take the gain back a little. Now that's sounding more like my kind of idea of a modern bass tone. So what have we got? Del Sol? It's very fat, the busy one. Well, this sounds very quiet and not very good. Sure, what this is supposed to be. I'll have to, have to investigate that because that doesn't sound right to my ears. I don't know about you. Uh, watching right now. <whistles> See if anyone's looking at our uh, some, of the, some views. Oh, hello. No, no, we don't want that crap. Go away. No, go away. So we've gone through all the bass amps. I think the SV Beast Bright. <laughs> sounds pretty convincing to me. I mean, could it be better? Probably. Stick a 4 2 one in front of it. But let's go for something a bit clever. So where this says it's going output to 2A, let's change that to host and have a completely different completely different setup. So... Let's get this down on channel two, can we? Input from host. Uh, nope, none. And let's put that on there. And let's do this as a mix. So, no, move over. There we go. So that can now be maybe. Let's just put an EQ in front of this distortion. And what we'll do, low and high cut, is we'll low cut all the way up to 500 hertz. And what we'll do is we'll have this gritty distortion. Then we'll have a gritty amp. So one thing I like to do quite a lot with a bass tone is have uh, something like, what have we got? Let's turn that off. I think I need to sort the grounding out on my bass because I'm touching the uh, the control plate and it's stopping making noise, but touching the bridge isn't. Uh, it's probably something's come loose somewhere. I'll have a look. So. Let's have a look at a plexi bright channel. Now let's just, can we isolate one? Ah, can 
compression, lack of compression. But let's throw this tube screamer that's kind of operating a bit like a dark glass. There's a lot of fuzz going on. And let's re- oh, the mids are already quite pushed on that. Let's change that out for some sort of... Uh Ooh, that's nasty. I like it. So let's just EQ that whole thing uh, with a simple EQ, so more mids. More lows. Because this is a blend, as you can see from this, of completely clean and the EQ. And let's put a compressor after that as well. Studio compressor. Now let's turn on the SVT amp as well. cab mic back to the 47 because we want more lows coming out of this let's turn the bass down a little bit because it must be killing you all by now I do apologize <laughs> here we can just play around with different distortions in front of this. Let's change the plexi out for a, a non-bright. Oh, I'm getting some popping noises probably because I'm trying to do two captures at once combined with uh, doing this all live in low latency well I think I'm getting somewhere anyway with this is a, a big rock and roll heavy tone So the SVT is a winner, and getting something like a Plexi with a drive in front of it blended in, I think that's, yeah, that's less than half, so let's bring a bit more of it in. Maybe take a little bit of uh, the dirt out of that. So that's compressed afterwards, and the SVT isn't, so when it's all blended together it should keep the spikiness of the distorted channel in check whilst giving us the uh, the uh come on brain giving us the uh, the life and the dynamics so that when we do compress the bass later on in a mix it doesn't just sound overly flat so now we should be able to get that kind of Knights of Cydonia almost Rickenbacker-ish <laughs> And, I mean, there's a, there's a tiny little bit of uh, stuff going on there, but most of the noise is not from the amp sim. Most of the noise is actually from the, the DI and the bass and me moving around, which means that they've got the high-gain sims much more accurate than they ever used to, and I can tell because uh, this is a relatively high-gain setup with that. 
and yet there's no gates involved and it's not making a ton of noise. In fact, if I was in the room with two amps split, one with a, a distortion in front of it, I would expect more noise than this. So I think this is a pretty decent setup. <laughs> But yeah, I'm pretty sure that I could uh, tweak this to be more metal rather than rock. But this is just a good... In fact, it's got a bit of that Geddy Lee thing going on, which, no surprise, I'm a big Rush fan, so get that. But it's that original clean blended with uh, an amp, a, a, a mid-gain amp and a high-gain amp. That's your rock tone right there. But yeah, so having shown you a lot of what you can do with... Oh, let's just change this up for something a bit crazy. Let's put a chorus in there. Why not? <laughs> That sounds nice. I'm going to turn that off. And one last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn, uh, I'm going to switch the SVT to just the amp. Ooh, that sounds uh, awful. That would be the uh, single coil buzzing from my uh, jazz bass right there. And I'm going to put in another impulse response. So I'm going to add in import. Uh, let's have a look in my IRs list because I've got a big list. And stick in the Ampeg 8x10 by Redwires uh, CapEdge D112 because that's one of my favorite impulse responses that works well with bass. So let's get that in there, get that on. So that's. Uh, on oh now that's a tone suddenly that's gone from kind of good to more than good and I think the fact that you can load your IRs in here on your own that's, hmm, interesting that's uh, it's a real kind of deal changer I'm going to have to have a look at the electronics of this bass after the stream and make sure everything's right. Um, but yeah, the fact that you can load an IR in there as well, like I've got the Redwires 810, which I know that Nolly swears by as well, because they are just... They've got a low roundness to them that isn't a muddiness that's not really been topped since. That kind of... It's a big fatness that really can fluff out a mix. Oh, you know what I mean. It suddenly sounds professional rather than just rubbish. Now, that's the bass stuff. So what we're going to do is we're quickly going to do something a bit new for the channel. And we're going to go on a quick commercial break. I say commercial break. There's no commercials. I'm just going to go on a break. I'm going to grab myself a coffee. And I'm going to load up a project that's got um, several guitars and bass parts already in it. And we'll go from there. So I'll see you in a couple of minutes.
Okay, sound is back. So, um, I'm going to cut the camera right here so that we can uh, do this because there's, there's far too much process usage going on trying to do this as a live stream to Twitch and a local recording and a full mix. Um, so, I'm just going to turn off the Twitch streaming for a little while, get this recorded and then get it uploaded straight to YouTube. So, if anyone's been watching so far, thanks for watching and I'm going to just cut the two together for YouTube and I'll see you very soon. Maybe we'll play some PUBG or something. So, see you soon. Okay, so we are back. So, we've got things going on now. I've uh, tweaked a project that I wrote as a little stinger for Primordial Radio. I'm not sure yet if they're going to be using it or not. But um, it's something I've made, it's something that's mine, and it's got um, seven guitar parts going on and a bass part focus i'm over here thank you very much and uh yeah there's a lot a lot going on in this project uh so i've had to kind of whittle it down a bit so i can stream this so it's now two stereo guitar tracks and then three uh solo mono ones so hopefully that'll make it uh streamable let's find out so uh, we've got it's just a little stinger that we've got here, but it goes something like this. I'm gonna turn that click off. So the rhythm guitar right now, let's have a look at how that's set up. So that's Okay, so that's Kazrog's Vintage Driver, which is essentially their uh, tube screamer. Going through a Fueled, which is a diesel. Uh, the closest thing, I think, is the Archetype that's going to be in the Line 6 stuff. And then Wall of Sound is my personal setup, which is using the Big Beast Cab, which is one of uh, the Hot Pole Studios' own, which is the Zilla 4x12. And I've used an SM57, uh, the D112 uh, kind of bass and kick mic which is one of my secret weapons and a Neumann KM184 all in equal measure panned a left and right stereo so that we get the left and right stereo out of it uh, they're all a little bit away from the cab apart from the 184 which is off center I know the, the D112's right in the middle and the uh, 57 slightly away slightly off off center so then at the moment they're going through Slate's Virtual Mix Rack. So let's take that off completely for now. So it's a decent tone. It, it's lacking a little in bite, but it's it's got that kind of again staging that I particularly liked so let's try and turn all this off and replace it with a copy of helix native so the first thing that we'll probably hear is it will sound awful because it'll be clean first the next thing that we hear is that the whole thing is in mono so we need to change everything over to stereo Stereo this, stereo that, stereo, stereo, stereo time. Hmm. So it seems that there's no setting to make an amp stereo, so that's going to be a interesting. So let's uh, have two completely different signal paths then. So let's remove everything that we don't want to make this look nice and simple uh mod none and let's get uh this one going import pan left and then pan right see if this gives us cuz i mean i don't i don't always uh do this but when i do um yeah, this is uh, from host 
Why can I not pan that? Why? What? Why are you not giving me the option? Uh, hmm. Let's make a second. Right, let's do this a different way then. Let's turn this into another amp and cab. Uh, so let's just pick, I don't know, a rectifier on this side for now. And then we'll, uh, so the split balance should be the same and we should have pan left, pan right. Right, so we're getting somewhere now at least. So this amp, let's change this over to be an amp and a separate cab. Uh, so let's make that 412 Cali Vintage 30 with a Cali Mark 4 lead, uh, which looks to be set about how I would like it, I guess. A uh, bit more low end, a bit less mid, a bit more treble bulk. And this can be amp and cab here, so that can be a Cali Vintage 30 as well for now, and that could be the rectifier. Let's see how that sounds. Split AB? I'm not getting what I'm after. We seem to have found We seem to have found a potential stumbling block here. Uh can we change no. So the host should be sending it's sending a left and a right, and we can see it giving us a left and a right we can't really choose which one of those we want so why does this one not have a pan option but that one does stereo stereo ah stereo pan maybe this is what i wanted in the first place so i've pan left pan right so these should actually be why can I not remove that's that's not right at all so if I cut that cut that don't tell me I've got to put another pan in here because that's just getting annoying now if I've got to set my own uh, hard left and hard right over and over this is starting to get irritating. Left, left, right, right. So we should get. Right and right, left and left. And that should be input from host. So now we're getting somewhere, but that really shouldn't have been that difficult. Uh, so. Now I'm getting a, a list of a different type. Uh, if I went to dual. Ah, that's just for the cab selection, right? So let's stick to V30 and turn this back. There we go. That's so I'm finding buttons that I don't like. So let's uh, oh, stick that back as it was. Make this the archetype lead. And let's stick the uh, 808 in front of both of these. A bit less gain. Up 
people in presence on the right side. <laughs> See, this is where the Helix Native is starting to fall down a little bit because um, it's going from uh, what I was thinking would be annoying, which was having the uh, vintage driver, the uh, you know, having these three as separate separate plugins. I thought it would be really annoying, but it turns out that it's actually uh, it might even be easier to have the three where I can just see each knob and I can just change each thing not have to change windows the stereo uh, way that I've run this just works everything seems to be quite simple even though there's a lot of knobs to go at everything's hidden here in menus and it's it's starting to get a little bit I mean the sound quality can be great but if it's taking me 20 minutes to find something I could probably have done that with a real amp not exactly ideal uh, so, let's uh, let's try something else. Let's turn off these cabs, and let's turn back on Wall of Sound and see how Helix Native sounds with my own cabs. <laughs> significantly better than it does with their cabs. So here's their cabs again. One of Line 6's weak points has always been the cabinet modelling. I'm sure if I put an impulse response in there, they would sound better, but the wall of sound stuff I think I'm going to stick with. Mostly because I work with two notes, but also I've now got a sound that I like out of a cab that I know well with microphones that I would use, of course, because apart from hiring one of them in, which is very similar to ones that I have but has a more recognisable name, this is the kind of cab that I would use. So it was a bit of a roundabout way of saying that, but yeah. I like the way that this cab sounds in two notes and I like the way it's easy to work with. Even though I don't tend to use the EQ and X side to comp compression and everything, if I was to use the two uh, the torpedo hardware, I probably would because then everything's in the box and I can take that out on tour. Whereas in the box like this, I prefer to use separate plugins because I can. Not because they're better or worse, but because I, I like the layout of the slate stuff. But that doesn't diminish the ability that this, uh, this thing has, has right here. So, uh, back to this. So, let's have compared to okay, so it's making me rethink my uh, tone that I had a little bit. But let's compare this now that I've tweaked it and now see what the difference is. And back to the Helix. That's interesting. That's very interesting. That, of course, um, I'm slightly spoiling my own ballot paper. Um, these have got tube screamers in. That's but let's change this to the archetype lead with the gain up. Let's just match these settings: treble, presence, and master five point seven. Now let's listen again on the helix with the archetype, which is cl close to the VH four on both sides. Now let's 
compare that back to the thermionic again. And just keep comparing the two. That's interesting. The helix does seem to have a sort of a reality about it. For, just so you know, I'm using the same wall of sound, exact same setup there. All I'm doing is turning off the heads and the tube screamers. And... I have to say, I, I didn't expect it to be that authoritative. It sounds like it really means business from the, the Helix setup there. Which, especially in the low mids, listen to the difference again. This is the thermionic. And this is the Helix. There's a bit less fizz there, and there's a, a definite kind of rawness to the low mids that's not just the clean coming through like you get in kind of cheaper amp sims. It really is kind of, yeah, that's starting to settle things for me. I mean, I'm probably thinking about it in a mix wouldn't do this whole dual amp setup where I did in Thermionic because it was easy. Um, I would probably just have a single amp setup and then just copy that across the amps left and right. But having said that, I mean, let's stick the Helix Native on some of the other channels as well. Uh, so the lead guitar uh, was quite a quiet, just extra, jing, 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 jing. So let's listen to that. That didn't have a tube screamer on it. Now let's turn off the thermionic and add the uh, the helix without the uh, without the tube screamer. Now that's that's got the same. Now let's that's got the same mix settings. So let's turn the mix back on on the rhythm channel. And see what these two sound like together now with the helix rather than the uh, rather than thermionic. Now I'm gonna have to change the mix a little on the uh, and just on the uh, rhythm guitars now and just take out a little of that low end because it's so thick it's fantastic but it's let's just do it there and maybe take out a little of that because i like the tone of it i just want to take out a little bit of that mud I'm starting to feel like guitars gel. these guitars gel a little better than they did with the thermionics. Very interesting. So I'm also going to do the same with the three solo. Because there are three guitars for a little kind of stinger at the end here, which if I solo those, you should hear that they do this. Let's see how that handles if I turn the amps off and copy over the Helix native. Oh no, let's do the, the one from the rhythm channel that's got the uh, tube. 
Okay, so here it is with the uh, thermionic. Which, now that I listen to it, sounds a bit scratchy when I put the helix in with the uh, the archetype lead. It does sound more organic, so it, it seems like that it's really come into context here. So, I think one last thing to look at will be the bass, and then we'll uh, wrap this up. So, the bass... It's that. So this is actually not thermionic, this is just B-O-D. Which does sound a bit thin. Let's see if we can get that SVT setting uh, that we had before. So uh, amp and cab. So let's go into bass, get that SVT bass beast bright. And then let's switch that reverb out for a compressor. Because in the mix, that should sound. That's starting to sound better and better. So you know what? It's not the cheapest, the Helix Native, but I am now seriously considering it. I'm really considering uh, finding the money to to get this because it's these these tones are the next level in terms of VST because uh, I always thought Pod Farm was a little bit pants. Let's be honest, but uh, we've gone from the original pods um, to the, the early software, like kind of inbuilt stuff through Amplitude, through Thermionic now is kind of my benchmark. And I think Helix Native might just be the next benchmark. So that's at this point, it's a lot of money. I know 400 euros right now, but if you're chasing tone and you don't want to spend the 2000 on an Axe FX or the like 1500 or whatever it is on a Kemper, this is probably your best bet. I mean, there is a bit of usability annoyance, as you've seen with trying to run things in stereo, but if you're not trying to do that, if you're just going to run one guitar setup per per channel, which is probably what you should do, to be honest. I was just trying to be lazy. But it did highlight something that comes up. Then it may well be the setup for you. So thanks for watching. I hope you found this useful. And... Uh, if you have found this useful, check out our Reaper tutorials and our other gear reviews, interviews, and there's a lot more to come. So uh, check everything out. Thanks for watching. I'm Adam Steele, and I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this, feel free to check out our other videos, as you can find here, or check out our Facebook and Twitter, or our Patreon page, which helps us to make more videos like this. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.